Hello, Dr. Carafano. Oh, Professor Papiani, thank you so much for coming up to the station to do your investigation. Um, I'm really excited to get a chance to record this for our students back on Earth. That would be really nice to share the information we're finding here on the moon um, with students back on Earth. But I also enjoy just coming up to the Space Gate Station because, I mean, who can beat this view? Yeah, I know. I, I never get tired of it. Uh, you know, it reminds me, I was reading a while back about uh, Buzz Aldrin, and he was talking about that when Neil Armstrong first stepped on the moon, he called back to him and told him that what he saw was a magnificent view. To which he responded, magnificent desolation. <laughs> I can't argue with that. Um, so tell me about what you found on the moon. So we let's flash back for a second. 2008, the Indian Space um, Center sent up Changrung 1, and it was a probe that took high quality pictures. And that was able to show that the saddle, the southern pole, had very thick, dense ice. We had some ice in our craters, and the northern pole had some more spread out. So we've gone and we've settled in the southern pole of the moon. Right. So um, the, remember that the ice on the North Pole is too diffuse to support the colony. That's why we went to the South Pole. Um, however, I just heard that you had an expedition to the North Pole to investigate the ice. Uh, what did you find? Yeah, that was quite an adventure in itself. The Lunar North Pole was a very interesting place. When we got up there, we grabbed some ice samples to send back to Earth and also to do some research on to today with your students here at in Spacegate. Wow, I heard you found some organic material. I, I just can't even consider what it would mean to find life on the moon. Well, that would be really exciting. We have to do a proper investigation first to make sure it's not some space trash that prior lunar colonists or just us left well, I completely understand, and we will do everything we can to help you uh, in your investigation. Um, and that includes having you work with uh, one of the greatest computer systems ever developed by humankind. Yes, I've heard very good things about um, your AI system, Aurora. I can't wait to work with her. Dr. Carafano, the airlock door has completed its cycle, and you may enter when ready. Uh, oh, thank you, Aurora. Well, Professor, after you. Thank you, Dr. Carafano. Cycling. Welcome students to episode 2 of Spacegate Station. In this episode, the scientists aboard the station will briefly discuss the Linnaean classification system and then identify the differences between the kingdoms of Archaebacteria, Eubacteria, Fungi, and Protista. This review will be an essential part of their identifying and categorizing an unknown biological material that was found on the moon and is being evaluated to determine if it is of terrestrial origin. Chief Engineer Walker I am noticing a 0.01 kilowatt power loss through the main power transfer conduit. This loss is within normal power fluctuation parameters. However, this is the first time I have noticed such a drop 
since our full deployment of our solar panel arrays. Okay, thank you, Aurora. I'll put it on my long list of things I got to check on today. You shouldn't complain, Mr. Walker. You should just consider it job security. Yeah, says the person who could be replaced by an answering machine. Uh, excuse me, I am the communications and computer systems officer aboard the space station. I am the glue that keeps this place together. Specialist Barber, I am confused. Glue generally refers to any adhesive that is applied in liquid form and dries hard to hold materials together. Glues are made from organic compounds like animal collagen such as horses, cattle, rabbits, and fish. I was not aware that humans were included as a source for its synthesis. No, no, Aurora, Aurora. We don't use people to make glue. Um, that's just another idiom. It kind of means that she feels like her job is so important that she kind of holds everything together, you know. I am once again confused. Could not her position be managed effectively by a system that, once activated, could play a generic announcement followed by a loud tone, which would enable the individual to record their message after the tone concludes? Yeah, right. Like I said, an answering machine. Boop. That is not funny. <laughs> Aurora, did he put you up to that? Specialist Barber. I have related to you already that I am built into the systems of SpaceGate Station and cannot be put anywhere as I am already here. Why do I do this to myself? Good morning, team. Uh, hopefully, you all remember Professor Papiani from the Lunar Research Center. Hey, Professor, good seeing you again. It's great that you're here. Aurora and I have been feeling a little outnumbered as of late, and we're super happy that you're here. Professor Papiani, how are you? Welcome to the Space Gate Station. Uh, you know, those shipments that you sent of the ice core samples, we have them. They're ready to go back to Earth. Also, I put them in uh, module number four. It's not being used at the present time. Okay? Thank you, Engineer Walker. Oh, Specialist Barber. After we finish our investigation today, we definitely need to get back together. Where are you in Stranger Things? Season 2, Episode 2. Sweet. Professor Papiani, I have set up the recording program to document our investigation today so we can share this with our students later. Your comparison samples, as well as the ice sample you provided, have been placed in the bio-containment chamber behind you. Thank you, Aurora. I'm looking forward to working with you today. You're going to be a tremendous help. Well, Professor, you're going to have to excuse me. We just recently found this new nebula, and I need to go down to the science coppola to adjust the camera to get some really good shots. We're having a lot of bugs in the system. Bug, an anthropod from the order of Hemiptera, and especially its suborder, Heteroptera, they are identified by having mouth parts, four wings, larger at the base, and incomplete metamorphosis. They are commonly considered a nuisance by humans. Aurora, he was not referring to insects. He was using it in the context of computer-based equipment. Processing. Processing. Bug. An unexpected defect, fault, flaw, or imperfection in a system or apparatus. Hey, she really needs to work on her idioms. Yeah. Well, if y'all excuse me, uh, Specialist Barber, I'm going to head over to the Science Coppola. I would really appreciate it if you would help Professor Papiani with uh, her research today. I would be happy to. This what? is so exciting. I get to go where no communications officer has gone before. Okay, if you two have any problems, just let me know. i got to go into the probe station and do some work on my digital output systems, okay? Will do. Right, thank, thank you, Engineer Walker. Right. Specialist Barber, would you mind working the digital microscope Absol and adjusting it for me? Absolutely. I could take a break from uh, taking messages. I mean, being the glue that keeps the station together. Uh, okay, thank you. I have initiated our recording, Professor Papiani. We have been live for 32.07 seconds. Thank you, Aurora. Welcome, students. My name is Professor Papiani, and I am the Chief Exobiologist for the Lunar Research Base. Today, what we're going to be looking at is classification. In particular, 
in the classification of the biological material that we found in some of the polar ice caps. But before we get into that, we first need to know how we classify organisms. And that system is called the Linnaean system. Aurora, can you please explain what the Linnaean system is? The Linnaean system consists of a hierarchy of taxa from the domain to the species. It is based on similarities and obvious physical traits. In this system, each species is given a unique two-word Latin name. Thank you, Aurora. Can, domains are the first of the hierarchy system. Can you explain to us what domains are, please? Domain is the first level of the Linnaean classification system. There are three domains, bacteria, archaea, and eukaryotata. Organisms are classified by their basic cell type. Thank you, Aurora, for the explanation on domains. The second classification layer is in kingdoms. Aurora, can you please explain what the kingdoms are for us? A kingdom is a general category that includes a set of organisms that share similar characteristics. The organisms in each kingdom are considered biologically distinct from the others. The six kingdoms are archaea, bacteria, eubacteria, fungi, protista, plants, and animalia. Thank you, Aurora. For our classifications that we are going to be do doing today, in my initial observations, I noted that what's in the ice cannot be from kingdom animalia or kingdom plantae. So we will focus mainly on the other four today. Specialist Barber, could you please go to the first Petri dish? I've almost got it. You're good to go. Thank you. Here we see our Archaea bacteria kingdom. And our sample that we have here is the Haliobacterium. Aurora, could you please classify why this organism is in the Archaea bacteria kingdom, please? Archaea bacteria are the oldest known living organisms. They are single-celled and thrive in extremely hot boiling water found in environments like volcanic thermal vents in the ocean and hot springs like the geysers at Yellowstone Park. Some species also live in very salty environments, such as the Dead Sea and the Great Salt Lake. Thank you, Aurora. The other thing to note is that archaea bacteria are prokaryotic cells. Aurora, can you classify what prokaryotic is, please? Prokaryotic are unicellular organisms that lack organelles or other internal membrane-bound structures. Therefore, they do not have a nucleus but instead generally have a single chromosome, a piece of circular double-stranded DNA located in an area of the cell called the nucleoid. Thank you, Aurora. Now we can see looking at our organism here, in this upper right-hand corner, we can see where the nucleoid is. It's that really dark spot. Now, prokaryote, like Aurora had already mentioned, means they do not have a nucleus. A way to remember that is pro means no. Prokaryote is no nucleus. Specialist Barber, could you please take us to the next Petri dish? No problem. I'm really getting good at this. Yes, you are. Thank you. This next kingdom is the eubacteria kingdom. And here we are looking at E. coli. Now, if we zoom in, E. coli is a disease that hurts us humans. But Aurora, can you please classify for us why E. coli is in the kingdom eubacteria? Eubacteria are also single-celled bacterial organisms. This kingdom makes up most of the bacteria in the world. Eubacteria are very common and well-known to us as parasites like streptococcus, which causes strep throat. However, these bacteria also help produce many antibiotics vitamins, and yogurt. Yes, Aurora, that is correct. And something also to note is eubacteria are also prokaryotic cells. As we can see looking at this sample of E. coli, you can see that we have an outer cell membrane and cell wall, but we do not have a distinct nucleus here. So, archaea bacteria and eubacteria are both prokaryotic cells. Specialist Barber, could we please transition to our next Petri dish? Sure thing. 
I'm definitely adding this one to my resume. <laughs> the next kingdom we will be looking at is the fungi kingdom. Aurora, can you please classify fungi kingdom for us? The fungi kingdom is recognizable to us as mushrooms, molds, mildew, and yeasts. Unlike the organisms in the Archaebacteria and Eubacteria kingdoms, fungi are multi-celled organisms. Unlike plants, they do not produce their own food through photosynthesis. Thank you, Aurora. Now if we zoom in onto our zygomycata fungi, we can see what one of these individual cells look like. Notice it is different from a prokaryotic cell. We now have a nucleus and other organelles buried within this cell. So we can see looking over here we have these darker portions, this big dark portion with a little circle, that's our nucleus. That's a true nucleus and that is going to be a eukaryotic cell. Aurora, can you please classify what a eukaryotic cell is? Eukaryotic cells are larger than prokaryotic cells and have a true nucleus, membrane-bound organelles, and rod-shaped chromosomes. The nucleus houses the cell's DNA and directs the synthesis of proteins and ribosomes. Thank you, Aurora. Eukaryotic cells have nucleus, so your trick to remembering eukaryotic is you do. EU as in you, not as in you as in you. But that is also true. You yourself are a eukaryotic organism. You have many cells that are eukaryotic. So you do eukaryotic and they do have a nucleus. Specialist Barber, could you please transition us to the next Petri dish, please? Already ahead of you. I am seriously quitting my day job. <laughs> I wouldn't do that just yet. Now here we're going to zoom in and look at the kingdom Protista. Aurora, could you please tell us what um, makes an organism fall into the Protista or Protozoa kingdom? Protista or Protozoa are single-celled organisms but are more complex than single-celled bacteria. The Protista kingdom includes algae and slime molds. Any microscopic organisms that does not fall into the bacterial, fungi, plant, or animal kingdoms is considered a part of the Protista kingdom. Thank you, Aurora. And like Aurora just said, Protista is our catch-all kingdom. If it doesn't fit perfectly into any of the other kingdoms, it ends up in Protista. And as we can see looking at our slide here, we do have what appears to be a nucleus-like, we have organelles, but it is not fully any of the other kingdoms we've previously mentioned. This is also a eukaryotic cell. Protistas can be single cellular, like Aurora mentioned, but they can also form colonies of their single cells. Now that we have learned about the six kingdoms and the four in detail, we would like to look at our unknown sample. And Aurora, I'm very impressed with your knowledge base thus far. I look forward to seeing how we can classify this unknown organism. Thank you, Professor Papiani. I find this work very stimulating and working with scientists helped me improve my abilities to differentiate during conditions involving the process of investigation. Please wait, please wait. Engineer Walker, I have identified we have a failure of the seals in the containment storage room of the number four module. I am also detecting multiple seal failures in the electrical transfer conduit access hatch adjacent to number four module. Okay, I'll check on that now. You're right. It seems like all the seals are losing their integrity. That's strange. Mr. Walker, could it somehow be related to the unknown material in the lunar sample in the storage room? I don't see how. I personally saw to the transfer and adjusted the temperature. I did it myself to maintain the frozen environment. Aurora, what's the temperature currently in Module 4? The present temperature is negative 102.3 degrees centigrade. That's not right. 
I personally set it to your specifications. Yeah, we, we collected the sample at negative 156.7 degrees Celsius. So it might have heat up, heated up and then due to microgravity and air currents, it could have moved. You know what? I didn't consider the fact that we took the sample on the dark side of the moon and now we're on the light side of the moon. So that additional direct light might have heated up the sample. How about we stop discussing how it happened and try to figure out how to solve this problem? This material is literally eating the space station right now. Danger, Mr. Walker, danger. I have detected an electrical failure in the transfer conduit. Okay, she is right. You two better figure this out. Otherwise, this whole ship is going to fall apart. Specialist Barber, can we look, pull up that unknown sample, please, real quick, and we'll see if we can identify it? Okay, go ahead. Uh, I'm zooming in. Okay, so I see looking here, I do not see a true nucleus. I do not see organelles. Um, I do see a distinct cell wall and cell membrane. So that means it's prokaryotic. So it's either going to be in the kingdom Archaea bacteria or Eubacteria. Mr. Walker, what is the um, material that the seals and the electrical conduit are made out of? Uh, plastic polyethylene. Okay. Um, Aurora, could you please look in the kingdoms Archaea bacteria and Eubacteria for an organism that eats polyethylene? Plastic? Processing. 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 Idenella saccanesis, a eubacteria capable of breaking down and consuming the plastic polyethylene to use as an energy source. This material was commonly used by early lunar colonists to reduce plastic refuge before being disposed of on the lunar surface. I knew I recognized this bacteria. We used to use it a long time ago. It's a bacteria that eats plastic and it just became too much to control and it started eating the spacesuits. So we had to dispose of it and we chose the poles. I'm really enjoying this history lesson, but can we keep it from eating the space station? Yeah, I would prefer that this stuff didn't make my station a buffet. Absolutely, Engineer Walker, we can do that. Um, we can cut, cut off module four, create it a vacuum and make it cold so that it simulates the lunar surface. So maybe it goes dormant again? Yeah, now that I can do. Okay. Hey, Aurora, is there any crew member below the number four module? No, Engineer Walker, that area is presently clear. Okay, that's perfect. It'll just take a few minutes to close that station off and that whole area will be exposed to a vacuum. Luckily, there's nothing too important in that area, so we don't have to worry about damaging anything by exposing it to space. There. Great job, Professor Papiani. You saved the space station, and more importantly, you saved me. I think it's pretty amazing how important science is when it comes to solving problems. Well, that's what science is all about, solving problems. Well, yeah, but, but I am kind of sorry that your discovery ended up being just part of the garbage that was left by those who came before us. It happens, but at the same time, our students have learned a valuable lesson here that science helps solve problems and that we learn from our history and that our classification system helped solve our history problem today and saved us. Well, then I guess it was all worth it. Yeah. Well. Okay. Is someone going to explain to me why all the lights are out in the station? Oh, and how did your experiment turn out? Did you ever figure out what it was? It looked like it was going to be kind of a boring investigation. Ooh, can I tell him, please? Can I tell him? Uh, excuse me. Is there something I'm missing here? Aurora, we should terminate our recording. Recording terminated.